What's up, you sexy motherfuckers? Welcome to another episode of Dumb Blonde. Today, the doctor is in the fucking house. I didn't realize how fucking awesome and just great. I mean, I did realize how awesome and great of a human being she was, but I didn't realize how many other people knew how awesome and great of a human being she is <laughs> and how she would be like one of the most requested guests besides my husband and child really? um, on here. Yes, Dr. Wow. Felix is back <laughs> up in this bitch. That how are you, Dr. Amazing. Felix? I'm kind of blushy right now. <laughs> <laughs> you like that introduction? That was a big one. Oh, That's man. But deal. it's so true, though. Like, I'm so happy to have you back. I'm really happy to be here. Today. Okay. Dr. Felix, in case you guys missed our last episode, Dr. Felix owns the service station. Tell me, tell everybody a little bit about the service station, what they can get there, like just everything. So service station is... Um, like a DBA. So it's a rebranding and an expansion of my gynecology practice. And so because we've grown from obstetrics and gynecology to gynecology and aesthetics, it's branching out. So it's not just uh, focused on on women and women's care. Oh, nice. So we can expand. We're starting to expand into a lot of areas I've, I just haven't had a lot of experience in. So are, are we talking about weenies here? Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. <laughs> so not only are you looking at JJ's all day long, now you get to touch some schlongs. Oh my God, the ball sack is amazing. Do any of them get hard? Because you're hot. So do any of them get hard when you're like down there investigating? Oh well, I haven't been experimenting with too many but no, most of them are kind of nervous about me being down there. Oh, gotcha. Well, they're there for a reason. <laughs> if I'm there, then I'm either learning something or I've got a needle or a scalpel or something oh, like that. So poor everybody's no. got micro penis whenever the doctor comes <laughs> near with a fucking scalpel. It retracts. Oh, no. <laughs> so, okay, you've branched out since I've seen you last. You've mm-hmm. branched out to doing men now. And what else? Any new services or services you want to talk about that are at the service station? Mm, we added um, a second esthetician, so we now have two two estheticians um, there and we're just expanding on our on our surgical procedures and then we're adding uh, a telemedicine part of it so a lot of people just can't get in you know to talk about results or have consults and things like that and so we're going to add those like, just kind of expand the opportunity to have some one-on-one time with me and awesome. talk about things that we we can do Yay. So what are some of the services that if, uh, you know, if I just wanted to walk in there and just get my hoot checked, what else could I get on the menu? <laughs> this is like a cat house. You just walk I in. I know, and right? Everything. That's what you should call it, though, the cat house. I think I said that last time you were on. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. So we had somebody else come through and, and she was like, I, I, you know, she's had so many things done. And so she was trying to figure out what kind of T-shirt she could have made with our name on it. So we, we were I came up with this whole like well serviced or I've been serviced. Oh my gosh, you yes, know? yes, yes. So um, it depends. So we we started moving into more vaginal aesthetics. Mm-hmm. So making and, the kitty pretty, pretty, making it soft and smoother. Mm-hmm. Or we keep adding the er on the end of it. And then from there we branched into uh, we don't have names for it yet, but men need those facial type things too down there. On my old fucking schlong. Oh my gosh, around dicks it. are ugly. Period. I so I don't know. Can I don't you? Know, be, I don't think they're ugly. They're you, amazing things. Thank you so much. Can you be dazzle a penis? <laughs> <laughs> you know how they like v- vajazzle vaginas? Yes. Just fucking stick a whole bunch of rhinestones on the ball sack. Make it look like a face. We can like glitter poof it. You know. Oh, that'd be fucking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so put stuff in the hole so when it comes out, it'll be like magic dust. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> like you ejaculate glitter. That would be fucking so awesome. I'm going to try that now. Dude, please. I'm we like, need to fucking invent I need a volunteer. Like I heard you were doing lipo or something. What is this? So I need this because my ass looks like a freaking golf ball i bet it does not no it does the shitter on this critter is dimply i swear (laughs) so we've been doing uh, we've had body tight uh, technology in the office for a while and that's coupled with liposuction so just as we've you know worked through protocols and i've gone to um, learn from other you know very very talented um, plastic surgeons they everybody has something to teach you either a right right way and a wrong way and hopefully when you walk away you get uh, something that I would not ever do and then oh my gosh I have to learn how to do that or what a great idea so but also put your own little spin on it right with body tight we've started moving into breast lifts oh I need you in my I've had my I had my uh, not to cut you off but it's (laughs) not about you let's talk about me um I had my implants taken out since last time I saw you you. Mm -hmm. so and I got a I got a lift 
but mm-hmm. I mean, I'm always down for a little more, you know? Mm-hmm. I feel like I got little 18 year old titties now. Oh, that's nice. No, they're so comfortable. I've never been able to go without a bra and I am like braless all the time. Cause I, you know, for 13 years I had the fucking jumbly wumblies. They were mm. huge. So yeah, I took my implants out. So I'm gonna have to come see you for that for sure. That would be awesome. And just to add something in, cause you just made me think about it, but so I'm just gonna spit out little bits of knowledge if yeah. if they come to me, but I've, I've read this article about breasts, like saggy breasts mm-hmm. and, and what you can do about it. And so I think most of us were raised to wear very supportive bras to help right. lift but it's actually it actually does the opposite so there are these fibers that run through the breast called um, cooper's ligaments mm-hmm. and gravity and the weight of the breast causes them to strengthen so they lift yeah. but if you're constantly supporting them then they're weak and when you take your bra off they fall. oh my gosh so it's like fucking yeah. snapping a rope yeah so you gotta have some sort of balance there you don't want to support too much what but kind you do of bras are good because i i literally only wear like bralettes now that's yeah. all i wear that'll i mean that you want gravity to be able to to pull yeah so that those muscles can i just wanted to show you my titties they were pretty i like the bra too <laughs> thank you <laughs> my understanding in <laughs> oh so you guys I had a late night <laughs> yeah baby i want to hear about your late night what does a fucking do- a vagina doctor a gynecologist do on a late night it depends so once or twice a year the late nights get way fun but oh, most nice. of the time late nights are work <laughs> oh shit you're not looking at penises are you no not late at night oh damn it Mm-mm. all right so you got breast lifting what else um we've been doing um face tight neck tight which you know for the turkey gobbler yeah for that thing i'm ready for mine to go so i really i know i said this last time but i'm gonna come in and see you i just don't want to i feel like we're like on a friendship level so i just don't want to have my butthole and my vagina in your face but i'll get everything else done it's amazing how i can keep those things separate yeah so i've been at you know parties with people and you know they come up and say something about uh, their exam or their surgery or their delivery or i'm on your schedule next week and i'm (sighs) Honestly, Let's talk about my butthole. Honestly confused for a good split second. Like, what? Well, oh, wait a minute. I'm your doctor. Yeah. I can... When I'm in the office, I'm in the office, and when I'm not, unless it's, you make me go back to work, I'm not gonna. It's kind of like a double life. You're like yeah. Clark Kent and Lois Lane all in one. Right. Depends on who, <laughs> which phone is ringing. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, okay, so you do lipo, and then mm-hmm. what else? We um, added you know, just like basic waxing with, oh. no, with body tight. We've moved into knee lifts. Oh, nice. Yep. Oh my God, I'm gonna come get my whole damn body right <laughs> Um We're doing thighs now. Um, we're gonna start doing fat transfer to the hands. So that uh, as we age, our hands are not telling on us. I'm so excited. (laughs) And then once we get that equipment in for smaller fat transfers, we're going to start doing larger volume. Yes, I want fat transfer in the top up here because my boobs are great, but you can, and I don't want to ever do implants again. So Mm -hmm. I want to do the fat transfer on the top just to give them a little, you know, fluff. So if you did um, body tight on the breast tissue, all of it it would just cause them just to firm up even more. Mm -hmm. And if you partner that with, fat transfer and add a little um, PRP, so platelet rich plasma in there to help it take, then you're more likely to retain that fat that you transfer in. Yeah, I love that. We got all kind of stuff. No, you do. do. And like, (laughs) dude, you've got like, it really is the fucking service station. You pull in there and come out with a new fucking hood and tires. All kinds of stuff. (laughs) Some more shit. I know. Tell people where it is so that they know where it is. So uh, we're in Smyrna, uh, just south of Nashville, north of Murfreesboro. and we're going to be branching out at some point, but Yay. location, 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 location. We have to figure out where we're yeah. going to be moving come to. Come to fucking Franklin, dude. All more. these housewives out here. <laughs> I got all of them in this neighborhood. They'll fucking come to you. I swear. Uh, well, if you have extra space here. <laughs> come on. <laughs> dude, you guys could have the two rooms in the front. Service, I swear. Station, service station part two. Oh, right? my God. I would be so thrilled if that transfer was going on in the living room. I would just walk in here and be like, what am I going to do today? Just fucking so excited. I'm definitely going to come. So as you know. Know, every time that I have you come on this podcast I announce it because you're just so full of knowledge and I just always want to pick your brain and um, I asked a lot of people on my Instagram story to write in some of their questions and boy did they <laughs> I can't wait <laughs> so I, are the best. I figure why don't we just dive in and just sure. get straight to it some of these are fucking just so weird like I just <laughs> <laughs> I want that one first <laughs> yeah I got I've got Set pages the tone. yeah <laughs> For sure. One woman is asking, why won't my doctor remove my expired IUD? Oh. I thought that was kind of gross. Like, there is not, like, one good reason why any physician should not do what their patients ask them to. Do IUDs expire? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, they do. So the companies will set out a an expiration date for the actual unit, and then they have a maximum amount of time that that unit 
uh, will maintain its advertised efficacy. So for an IUD, the efficacy might be 99.8%. So it is going to protect you against pregnancy up to 99.8%. So when they give you that percentage, they can only guarantee that percentage for so long. And then after that, it may only drop off by, you know, two to five percentage points, but that falls below their cutoff for quality, right? Does it give you health problems also if it's expired? Well, it depends how how long it's been expired. Gotcha. So if the unit she said. if the unit is expired, you don't place it. But most of the time those companies will send us the unit and they have a shelf life so they can sit on our shelf for a year or a year and a half or something like that. And then once you put it in, it's good for five years. Wow. So so knowing that and just thinking through it, you know that if you put an IUD in, most likely it's gonna last several months after the Expiration quote unquote date. five year period. So you have some wiggle room, but she's asking why he won't take it out and I and it's already expired that sounds yeah. crazy it, even if it wasn't expired if she just said take it out the answer is yes so the advice is throw the whole ass doctor out <laughs> yeah. go go find somebody else I, to I take think, it out I think she should ask why yeah and ask if, why, if yeah. there's not and it shouldn't be her asking me why because of course I don't know that doctor but right, right, right. ask that doctor why and if that answer's not good enough or doesn't make sense then try to find a plan B yeah then Smyrna service station yeah Smyrna <laughs> service station if you're out here in uh, freaking Tennessee that's bitch. right <laughs> Um, this one ha has another question about an IUD also. She just said, um, I have to get my IUD out next month and I do need to know how painful that's going to be and what I should use for birth control after. Just for the record, it's the copper 10-year IUD that I'm getting taken out. So most uh, most people that come through my clinic are very, very worried about that removal because they they have that memory of the traumatic insertion. And the copper one is one of the larger units, so she probably has been justifiably traumatized by having that oh one place. Um, but it tends to not hurt as bad coming out as it did going in. There are strings that are just pulled. That's assuming they can see the strings and they're not having to go fish for them. Yeah. Um, well, that mofo has been in there for 10 years. Are the strings still going to be there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's crazy to think about. Like oh my nothing God. should ever sit in there for 10 it's years. It's like implants. <laughs> no, I learned my lesson with implants, yeah. man. No, you never know. It's fucking scary. And yeah, what do you think? Do of, well. Yeah. What do you think about birth control? I'm a huge fan of IUDs, so I would just have it replaced. Just have it replaced mm -hmm. and don't even fucking worry take, about yep. taking the pill. Yep, take it out, put another one in, keep it moving. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. As a, why, why do you prefer IUDs more than uh, birth control? So I'm going to just change up the terminology a little bit. So okay. birth control, IUDs are birth control, right? Gotcha, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I like them better than other forms of birth control because they, they let your ovaries do their own thing. Any of the IUDs work locally. They don't you know, with a pill, you're taking a pill, it's getting into the GI system, the liver processes, it changes a little bit, it circulates back around to the a center in the brain, dials down that brain center, which dials down the production of hormone from the ovary, and then that has effects on the uterus. So that's a, that's a, a huge circuit. Wow. Um, and as it's dialing down that center in your brain to decrease your hormone levels, like you feel that, right. you know, so people will uh, say they, quote unquote, up you know, pills make me crazy or birth mm. control makes me crazy. And what's happening is um, the, the hormone levels are dropping. And so when you have a rapid drop in your hormone levels, you will freak out like oh, anybody yeah. will. It doesn't matter your age, but if you are on a long-term low-dose birth control, then for a long period of time, you know, you are approaching perimenopausal, you know, levels of hormone for a long time. So over time, uh, sometimes people will stop having periods altogether. They'll mm -hmm. start complaining about... Um, you know, their sex drive or libido, ability to orgasm, just all of it. Just There's after just so it. much mm -hmm. that goes into right. that. So with IUDs, you put it in the uterus and those units do not dial down that section in your brain and it does mm -hmm. not decrease the hormone that the ovaries make. And so you feel more like yourself. When you're talking about other forms of contraception, like pills, patches, there's the actual efficacy rate. And then mm. there, so it's theoretical and actual. Mm. So like pills, um, I, they're advertised between like 94 and 97% effective. That's with perfect use. So that's theoretical, but actual efficacy for all the things that change when we take it, if we take it, you know, yeah. um, Anything that might compete against the liver for processing it will decrease the efficacy. So there's there's also, an actual rate. And like it's certain lower. foods can do that too. Like yeah. you have to like be be really careful with 
grapefruit juice. Eat stuff like that. Well, grapefruit <laughs> juice fucks with Xanax too. I fucking haven't had a grapefruit in forever. <laughs> because they told me if choose. I take you have it. To choose. That I don't take a lot of Xanax, but there's every now and then I got to lick something to right. get rid of this anxiety. <laughs> so let's move on real quick. This person said, Brooke wants to know, how come when I come, it can take up to a few, if not several hours for the ejaculate come to leave the body? I thought that was so strange. So you mean... I, this is, I don't know if this is a girl or a guy, but the name is Brooke. So I don't know if this is a man saying that or... Leave the body. After she comes, why does it take so long for the... Do you think maybe he like pre-orgasms and then the ejaculation leaks out? Or maybe he's got a blockage in the tube or something? I don't even know how to interpret that question. So I'll just answer it every way I can. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So if Brooke is talking about Brooke's ejaculate leaving Brooke's body mm. and Brooke has a vagina um, and it's, I'm not sure if it's a man I don't know I'm going to answer for both okay gotcha I'm just going to imagine this whole scenario okay so if Brooke has a, a vagina and we're talking about Brooke's orgasm leaking out then maybe those skein's glands that produce all of that mucus I mean there's a couple different places in along the vagina that produces lubrication so maybe she's or she, maybe Brooke's referring to that yeah to all of those centers with all of that excitement just taking mm-hmm. the time to get out but if there's a vagina involved i bet you there has something to do with that swelling mm-hmm. so engorgement and flushing and then and then the vaginal canal swells and it swells um almost to trap semen right. in the back gotcha. so that the cervix uh, can you know do gotcha. its thing and you can get pregnant so depending on the type of sex her partner all of that stuff there's there. It could position change everything mm-hmm. yeah. where the swelling is, how much swelling happened, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's it. Okay. And if it was a guy? <laughs> and if it was a guy, then I'm going to worry about prostate secretions or, right. or prostate hypertrophy. And, and again, gynecologist, but, you know, just basic medical knowledge would make me feel like maybe there is a, 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 res- a constriction somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Or do you think the swollen... Uh, or is they just dripping? Are I they dripping? Know. I mean, is... <laughs> service station, know. Smyrna, bring it to me. <laughs> bring that ding a ling a ling Bring it all to up me. in the service station. <laughs> all right. Why does my coochie dry up when my hubby and I are bumping uglies and it's really good? How old is this person? They didn't tell me all that. These people need to be a little more specific. Yeah. So it could be um, age. It, it could most likely hormone level. Gotcha. You know, you get really excited and you get that you know that initial burst but if the hormones can't keep up and keep you know the the vagina doing what we want it to do then it's going to dry up and also, how long are they having right sex also and, i was going to say if she's yeah. not mentally into it like you no matter how good it is if it's like yeah. if something hurts you or you know it just throws you off your game maybe yeah. that too medications mm-hmm. um, can make you chronically dehydrated so depending on on what she's smoking what she's taking right. you know things like that gotcha how to revamp my sex drive after a hysterectomy. Mm, okay, so if the ovaries were taken out, then we'll probably need to do some hormone replacement therapy. Do you do that at the service station? Yes. Oh, that's awesome. Absolutely. And you don't have to be menopausal to get it. You can be perimenopausal. So just as you start fluctuating and realizing that things don't feel the same or your thoughts aren't the same or right. your desire's not the same, then we can kind of help you with that as well. When does somebody start becoming perimenopausal? Asking so for a I friend. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many. <laughs> So many variables. Um, some of it has to do with your genetics. Some of it has to do with your weight, with your medical history. But I've had people start having symptoms in their late 20s. Wow. And that's not the norm. Mm-hmm. Um, normally, it's in late 30s, early 40s, something like that. Where, and then it's more, it's kind of subtle in the beginning where you're just like, you start finding excuses for, you know, why your sex drive isn't as high or um, why you're so moody or... Um, your sleep quality sucks or is it hot in here? Is it just me? You know, that sort of thing. So I think I've been perimenopausal (laughs) since 19. (laughs) I mean, I just, I have a raging sex drive though. And I, well, I think that's, that's one of the, like one of the, um, sort of announcing things like you, you know, we, we, women, females tend to have their, their sexual peak later in life. And then, so I think we hit that peak and then we go at it really hard and then we hit the wall where yeah. things start changing. I'm about to hit the big four O literally in like seven days. And I'm just oh, like, happy early birthday. thank you. <laughs> and I'm just like, Oh my God. Like, I don't feel like I'm a normal 40 year old. So I feel like my body's going to, I'll go into fucking menopause when I'm like 85. You might. <laughs> I'm speaking that in my life. 
I thought the same thing about me. I have a lot of patients too that come in in their 40s and asking questions about like sexual addiction or do you, you know, I don't know what's wrong with me because I keep looking at other people and I, you know, I love my no, husband. you're horny, bitch. Yeah, it's, I get it. That is what it is. Like you're, you're in your peak your husband's not or your partner's yeah. not or you know you didn't think it was real and you know so now here we are yeah, <laughs> and yeah. i'm like roll with it you yeah know? just go with it <laughs> so to revamp the sex drive after hysterectomy you would recommend hormone replacement if the ovaries were gone if it's if the ovaries are still present then a lot of times it just has to do with self body image like i'm missing that part or i don't know what this is going to feel like for my partner i also feel like in ne- immediately after a hysterectomy there is some sort of dip in the hormones even though textbook and theoretically there shouldn't be wow there's a lot of people that come in complaining about hot flashes and vaginal dryness do you think and, it's mental or do you think mm-mm. it's no good stuff I don't, I don't know what the, the connection drop. is, but the, there is there's a dip, but then the ovaries kind of pick back up and start working again. Might be like the tr- initial trauma, maybe, it of could having be. that surgery. Maybe. Maybe. I also think that like some of the service station things we've been offering, like the PRP injections, you know, we can revamp your G-spot. We can revamp um, the clitoris. Like we can make things work better, differently. Yeah. That sort of thing. I'm excited about that. Do you do yes. like those G-shots and stuff yes. like that? Okay. Does that yes. hurt? You got to stick a needle in there? Yes. It hurts a needle. <laughs> Good. I don't know if I could do that. I'm pretty gangster. I'll do everything. No, else. I want you to. I want you to come in and try it. Oh my! I think you just want to see my vagina. I think I could probably find that online if I looked. <laughs> just so no, <laughs> for once I'm the only fucking Instagram model that you cannot find my vagina online unless well, you go I... all the way back to my webcam days, which was in like fucking 2001. You might find a video of me sucking a, a weenie, <laughs> but other than that, no. I fucking. Well, if I ask nicely, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll just send you news. That's all I gotta do. <laughs> so uh, no, I want you to come and just kind of see everything that we do, just because yeah. you do take. I mean, I. I've seen you take all kinds of care about yourself. Yeah, so. no, I'm so ready to do it. You have no idea. And I'm really going to do it this time. I'm not just talking shit. So let so, me not say it again. I'm just going to go. Those G spots and uh, the injections that we do in the clitoris, we, we our PRP system concentrates uh, that Buffy coat down to like less than one milliliter. So mm-hmm. it's not a painful injection. So right. I, I have a friend that was getting these shots and I had no idea what they were, but every six months she was going to get them. And I was like, when she she's told me like what she's doing, I was like, bitch, don't you dare go <laughs> anywhere else. Let me learn how to do that. Yeah. So um, I had her come because she knew what they were like. And she said that um, the way we were doing it was so much more comfortable than how she was like, she, it hurt her bad at the last place because of the volume. And so this is a very small volume. And so there's a needle involved, so it is going to hurt, but it's, it's worth it. It's not how it, it sounds, it. like a needle in, in your clit. Mimi, we should go do a day trip to the service <laughs> station and film it. Yeah. For I'm serious. And just film yes. me fucking doing all the shit there and just my reactions and everything. I think mm-hmm. it would be awesome. Yeah, let's a do that. facial. Like, I've been, we've been dying to get you in for that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys hear this, right? I think she's hitting on me. I'm not sure. But it's okay. I I'm like not, it. I'm not passive aggressive. I love it. I love it. Okay, so a lot of people fucking send in. Everybody wants to know about squirting. Girls want to know how to do it. Is it really piss? Fucking, you know, men are obsessed with it. How do you do it? So squirting uh, or female ejaculation yeah. is really a phenomenon that's related to the skein's glands. And the skein's glands um, are on either side of the urethra. So in uh, very brash layman's terms, the pee hole has these two glands on either side of it, and they produce mucus, which, is, which in turn turns out to be the ejaculate. And the skein's glands are the female version of the prostate. All right, mm-hmm. so prostates are active. They make fluid. Uh, that's part of what comes out when men have orgasms. And so the analog for us is skein's glands. And I don't believe that everybody's skein's glands work right. that way, but there are some that can yeah. work like that. And so, yes, female ejacula- ejaculation is real. And yes, sometimes female ejaculation is urine because the person is trying so hard <laughs> Listen, <laughs> to really get uh, yes, that I, female ejaculate out that yes, it turns out being pee. That they push out. Yeah. I mm-hmm. am a squirter. I can't squirt with a penis, but I can squirt with fingers, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, I was having a threesome one time, <laughs> and this girl <laughs> was like, oh, I'm going to squirt, I'm going to squirt, whatever, and she pissed all over the bed. Like, it was yellow, and it smelled like piss, and I was just like, oh, my God, this is that's not it. Because when I've done it, it's like clear water. Yeah. It's not pee right. at all so when everybody asks me that i'm always like no it's not pee and they're like yes it is and i'm no, like it's no not. it's not dude. it's really not yeah <laughs> there's it's a like difference. sweet sugar water <laughs> right that is warm and feels like pee at yes. first and then everybody stops and goes 
oh no wait yeah (laughs) no exactly yeah Yeah. so if you had any techniques to tell anybody how to swear is it just sort of like you got to find your fucking button on your own yep so some people will squirt if there is just persistent stimulation of the skein right yes other people you can get them to squirt if um, you're on that g-spot just right yes exactly Mm -hmm. um that i think which is why i can't do it with a penis i have to have him do the fingers because Mm -hmm. for some reason i just can't do it with a penis (laughs) i don't know how okay so candace said been trying to have a baby with my soulmate lost two what do i need to do so the two she lost, I guess, is with her soulmate. So in my practice, if you lose two, we start looking at some uh, at the DNA to make sure that mom and dad um, are not genetically incompatible. Right. Um, and then also family history sometimes plays into it. So it may not be that there's an issue between mom and the dad, but it could just be that there is something that runs in the family that is causing her to miscarry. So we start looking at um, are they first trimester losses versus second trimester losses. And then from there, we can kind of stratis- stratify where we need what tests we need to run right um so if there's a family history of early stroke or early heart attack or people having um, dvts and clots and things like that a lot of times that family history lets me know that the person sitting in front of me my patient who's too young to have had all that stuff but is having miscarriages has a genetic dvts is deep vein thrombosis Mm -hmm. okay i just wanted to make sure you just wanted to say deep i did i just wanted to act like i was fucking and you wanted to say thrombosis too (laughs) (laughs) totally you fucking caught me um okay so you would have to look at her history you would have to you Mm -hmm. know just figure out what's going on sometimes it's as simple as adding a baby aspirin a daily baby aspirin and it'll change your whole clotting profile and then you don't miscarry you know because there are Mm. some some mutations that are almost subclinical and and then they present themselves as miscarriages you know and if you don't have an OB that's looking for that, and I think most of us are now, but right. like back in the day, you just mm-hmm. didn't think that your dad's stroke would have anything to do with right. your miscarriage, but there's a link. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's all just, you're just tied in with genetics and DNA mm-hmm. and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, How do you get rid of hemorrhoids? Surgery. Does it have to be surgery? There's no other way. Oh, do you do that surgery? No. Okay. <laughs> I was like, do not go, go to the service station. She does. Poor Blake. Not, not service station. Poor Blake. This is his first day. And he's probably just like, I'm never going to look at a vagina ever again. <laughs> <laughs> or he's going to want to look at all of them. Yeah, he's going to be like, let me see all of this down here. So this is a three-part thing. I'm trying to figure okay. out where the first one is. But the guy said that his wife's testosterone is non-existent. And she gets plenty wet whenever they're about to have sex, just just not tissue wise the doctor said she's like a dry rotted rubber band so there's no they can't have sex so her vagina gets wet but when he gets in there it feels like everything's ripping yeah so with low hormone or so the vagina is meant to stretch so it's mm. got all of those wrinkles in there it's meant to stretch um, and accommodate so if you can't stretch because you don't have enough hormone then it doesn't matter how wet you get it surface wise it's not it's not going to stretch. So I hate that they use the terminology dry rot rubber band. That's so rough, right? Yeah. Like, wh- who are your fucking doctors? <laughs> it's like, so mean. God. <laughs> <laughs> but Giving you guys a bad rap. I know. Like, I'm but that's why we have you. That's why we have you, because yeah. everybody can come to you now, and they know you're compassionate and empathetic. I am. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, it, it needs to be able to stretch. So you, you can rehab that tissue um, with hormone. Um, you can rehab it with one of the machines we have in the office. You just need to uh, restore or rejuvenate that tissue mm. so that it can stretch. You can always put a lubricant on top of That's it. That's what I was going to ask. Like yeah. if they did like a silicone lub- lubricant, would that help? Or Nope. No. No. So you have to imagine, I don't know what kind of an... I'm, paranoid about my analogies now because that one was so hurtful oh no you're good but i think everybody knows you're in the right place (laughs) (laughs) so all right we'll just use a condom for an example you can fill up a condom and it would stretch 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 but if it was a a dry rotted rubber band type of condom you know you could put water in it but it's going to pop because it's not going to be able to stretch any mm -hmm. elongate so when i so that's like the quality of the actual condom itself so you you can put lubricant on that condom it's not going to make it stretch anymore still gonna just break you need you need a new rubber right Right. so (laughs) yeah so you can replace that lining 
of the vagina with a, a younger one by us, using some of the technologies that we have in the office. Like for her, if she did a Votiva treatment, a form of treatment where, you know, we added the radio frequency energy to the vaginal lining, and then that would cause a new growth mm. of cells, which would allow it to stretch. But if you pair that with PRP and then add some estrogen on top of that, like that's like the trio. That's Yay. that's the cherry on top so type thing. So you're out here saving lives and saving vaginas and it's, saving marriages. I mean, it, it hell, it, it's so important. It's no, so important. It really just, is. And a lot of it turns out to be, you know, about self-image. Like, that woman knows that, you know, she's hurting after sex, so she's going to be complaining to her partner yeah. after sex, which Poor thing. starts to change, you know, changes the dynamic. The dynamic. Mm-hmm. And then he becomes, if he's compassionate, you know, he doesn't want to hurt her. Right. So then they're having sex looking at each other because she's trying to not act like she's being hurt. Right. But And he's looking like, damn it, am I hurting you? Oh. And, and then after a while, it just, it just takes a oh, strain. Honey, it's not that important. Strain. Yeah, and then that makes a lot of my patients just feel like they're not quite the same person. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that's really been my focus is I want us to feel like at the end, you know, at the end of all of our work with kids Mm -hmm. and all of our career building, everything, at the end of all of the sacrifice we made, we should be able to enjoy our life at that time and not have to worry about you know, is that left vag lit too saggy <laughs> or, God. you know, is my dry yeah. rot rubber band vagina going to keep uh, my man happy? No, yeah, like that's no. not nice. But I totally, totally agree. So, you know, we've just been kind of focused on, you know, asking people what they need for their quality of life right. to be uh, better so that they are celebrating their yeah. days instead of trying to compensate for for their days. And, and it shouldn't be about what other people have to say or other people think. It's just what makes that particular person feel empowered that she could go out and share herself with yeah you know her friends her family her mm-hmm. partner her whatever I love that that was a really good answer I feel like that <laughs> deserves a standing <laughs> ovation um how do you know if your bladder is falling after having a baby I've had three and it wasn't until the third that I've felt this way so if she wanted to check herself she could stand up put two fingers in the vaginal opening and bear down and if there is something that pushes on her fingers it probably is the bladder that's falling on on her fingers she can get a mirror and look sometimes as well oh, fuck. a lot of people come in uh, to the office because they they found quote unquote found a mass down there oh and so that they'll feel something kind of coming out um sometimes um it's just symptoms like obviously she's asking that because she's something's changed right? right so either maybe she's leaking urine which doesn't mean the bladder's fallen a lot of times that's just a, the urethra or maybe she feels something so it you know based on right just, on the just symptom. the question and, mm-hmm. yeah but she could do it herself or she could go to the gynecologist and you have know, them just, figure it out yeah. yeah whoever delivered her that's so scary that hits so close to home because my mom had to put her bladder in a sling you mm-hmm. know so i'm just like oh god this yeah. is now I'm 40. Yeah. <laughs> My life's falling apart. Then in those, uh, we should probably talk about that too, because I think more people need those procedures than have them mm-hmm. actually. Um, a lot of times if you had a family member that had that done, like, oh, well, my, my mom's stuff fell out or, you know, that's the way it is. You know, so that that type of mentality is passed along from grandmother to mother to you know, yeah. from aunt to you just all of the you know women in the family. It's just something you should expect to have happen. It happened to me. It happened. You know, it's just one of those things that happens after you have babies. But it's really a genetic thing. It's not yeah. normal. And then later on in life, when you really need that corrective surgery to happen mm. and you're not a good surgical candidate, then everybody gets really worried. So if you've got a tear, fix it. You yes, know, if, immediately. Yeah. Don't wait. Get like, it don't done. Don't just wait until your fucking bladder is 65 hanging out. 65 years your, old. Oh, gosh. It's hanging out. And your skin's broken down because <sighs> your urine is acidic. So you have to like think this through I get these women that come in from nursing homes you know because they've Mm -hmm. got skin infections down there because Mm. the urine they've been sitting in their diaper oh you know and it doesn't have to be that way how's that for your first day (laughs) poor Blake (laughs) Blake's over here just like fuck my life how can having your tubes tied affect your hormones and your libido it doesn't good it does not it does not there tends to be a change that happens around the time of a tubal though so people have to think this through people have tubules so they don't get pregnant right you get that tubule so you're not getting pregnant because you're tired of being on your birth control or you're it's not safe for you to be on your birth control anymore so while all these women are on birth control whether it's an IUD or the pill or whatever their periods are being controlled wow you get your tubes tied and you're like I'm not taking that pill anymore I want the IUD out everything kind of wakes back up right so starts it's doing like you're swatting the fucking bees and hornets nest. right and then as you know a couple months go by or whatever and people come in and they're like, I didn't have these problems before my tubal. 
it's the cause you know it's because i have right. the tubal but it's not the tubal it's because you stopped the birth control right when you got the tubal so kind of either if you're going to drop everything ease off of it right is that your advice yeah or you know get the tubal because you may not want to be on a particular type of birth control right. anymore but if you're on something some medication to control your period or to control your hormone levels then you stay on that after your tubal because the tubal's not going to, all the tubal's doing is keeping the egg and the sperm from meeting. Gotcha. So it's not going to affect too much. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. When someone has a 35 day cycle, can it take 35 DPO for an EPT test to show positive? No. It's 14 days prior to your cycle day one. She'll know what that means. Gotcha. So that DPO is days past ovulation. EPT, I guess, early pregnancy test or UPT, urine pregnancy test. So a 35-day cycle means that for the first 21 days, she was trying to mature the egg that she released 14 days prior to her next period. Gotcha. So the variable part of a woman's cycle is the, the amount of time it takes to mature the egg for release. But once the egg is released, if it's not fertilized, the period happens at a fixed interval of 14 days. Gotcha. That's crazy. Very confusing. The body is nuts. I'm <laughs> just like, amazing. holy shit balls. Yes. What does DPO stand for? Days past ovulation. Days past ovulation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. Crazy. The body is just nuts this is why having kids <laughs> it's, is like a foreign language to me it's so did i so last time you were here we yeah, were talking, talking about, about it. doing fertility so yeah. i went we went to the this fertility institute that's out here and they had me do this test um where they shot dye in my ovaries in your two Uterus in my tubes, tube and yes H hsg yes it was the most painful thing i've ever been yes. through in my life like it was so bad i'm um, sorry so we did that and then they did like testing for me and everything looks normal except they said that my egg count was a little bit low for my age what does that mm -hmm. mean when we're born we have all every egg that we will ever 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 hope to mature and then depending on your genetics and your hormone levels and things like that um you may not have good ovarian reserve mm. right so every month that your body's going to let you ovulate it starts recruiting eggs and starts starting to mature them and then there tends to be one or two dominant ones that kind of lead the pack right and the rest of them sort of arrest in that phase so the poorer quality eggs tend to not make it through the whole maturation process so as you start burning through those and you know years go by and things like that you may not have as much good ovarian reserve and so there's a test that a lot of fertility doctors do called an amh anti-mullerian hormone test mm. and that number lets will let them know what the what the reserve is i try to not do that test even yeah. though it's a good one i'm not a fertility specialist and so a lot of times people come to me they don't want that right they don't want that um well i did this test and so therefore you only have a 20 percent chance of conceit they don't they don't want that spoken over them right you know they're just like what are we going to do can you get me pregnant and then we just work through it. i try to do it as cheaply as possible right you know every month there's a discussion this is what we did these are the results this is how we might should tweak it a little bit yeah and then we have a ridiculously <laughs> high success rate i don't know why that's so awesome um, though that speaks volumes for you though you obviously know what the fuck you're doing i think you know? we just don't that's not our focus you know right so when people come it's because they don't want that fertility center intensity right um it is intense that's intense. what i that's what i said mm -hmm. on uh, one of the uh, podcasts i did with jay is yeah. you go in there and you, they give you this much hope they're yes. like oh blah 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 blah. this is gonna happen this won't happen this <clears> won't happen <throat> this won't happen but this might happen and mm -hmm. you're just like oh Yep. Fuck my life. And like, then they're like, if you do all of these super invasive things and you yes. spend all of this money, then this is your success rate. And so yes. it becomes a bit self-defeating. Right. right. And it and scared me away. I it's all like, based mm. on probability and statistics. And to be fair to them, they have to normalize everything. So you have to have that HSG, that ultrasound, that endometrial biopsy, mm. your hormone levels drawn, the semen analysis, the psych analysis. You have to have all of that yes. before they start treating you because if there's anything crazy wrong, you're going to drop their numbers down. So yes. like I said, I have a crazy high success rate, right? Yeah. But I may have, you know, I may see like five to 10 fertility patients per year. Right. So if I get most of them pregnant, you know, that's awesome. But if yeah. I had 50 to 100 a month, you know, my success rate probably wouldn't be as high. Right, that. exactly. And then if there's something really, you know, really difficult about you, I can't see you anyway. You know, right. I'm not going to keep a complicated patient. Right. I'm not going to waste yeah. your time and money with that. So a lot Absolutely. of our people that have to go out. So I kind of get the ones that are quote unquote easy to get pregnant, right. or, you know, or, or that are just willing to work with me and I'm willing to work with them. I love that though. I'm ready to go the surrogate <laughs> route. I don't even care. Let me get my Kim K and Kanye on. Right. <laughs> I do not care. Who wants to have our kid? Everybody DM me who wants to have oh, our gosh. kid. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Miss Justine.
Christine said, I get BV all the time. Same partner, not multiple. How do I keep it away for good? Uh, I would suggest that she get that expanded panel ran. So just straight BV, if that's the only diagnosis she she has, and it's because, you know, a doctor or somebody, a nurse practitioner, whatever provider looked under the microscope and gave her that diagnosis, or if it's based off of just symptoms, then most likely she's not being treated fully. Right. So uh, you can't look on a slide and know what bacteria are on there. You can just look on the slide and see a ton of bacteria. So if you don't send that a sample off to a lab that's going to like break it down for you, and they will, they'll, they'll break it down like what percentages of normal bacteria are in the vagina. Right. And then they'll give you a list of all the abnormal, the bacteria that should not ever be in the yeah. vagina. And those are the ones you have to treat, um, not just the patient, but the patient's partner right. for. That's so, that was my next yeah, question too. If she's getting it several times a year, either he hasn't been treated or his partner has hasn't been treated and I hate to speak that but that's right. the truth for some people as yeah well. mm-hmm. gotcha that's some fucking deep shit right there <laughs> um why is it that I can masturbate and relax enough to get off but when I have sex I can't I cannot um orgasm that sounds like a comfort level with the partner right mm-hmm. yeah I totally agree like if you're just not com- maybe she's not comfortable with her body you know so whereas if it's just her flicking the bean she feels good about herself she feels right. hot so of course she's gonna orgasm I, f- I feel like in a healthy relationship your orgasm should be better yeah <laughs> with sure. your partner yeah. you know because you but have like, help <laughs> listen a lot of guys these days do not know how to fucking make a woman orgasm I mean yeah, I'm no. sorry they don't take the time all they care about is getting it up getting it in getting it on and getting it out they don't care yeah. about you know stimulating in the clit or doing any of that so you know <laughs> or stopping maybe you need to throw the guy away <laughs> yeah exactly stopping in the middle and doing something else. yeah like fucking Changing doing up. getting up and fucking doing a little tiktok dance or something <laughs> in the middle of their sex go get me a snack <laughs> yeah for sure make me a sandwich i'm 37 what can i do to improve my sex drive okay so there are a couple of new medications out now um so if i'm just going to assume that that she's done all of the basics like she's comfortable with herself and and her sex drive used to be fine and so there's a couple of different medications that you can take now. One um, is a daily pill. Uh, I don't even know if I pronounce it correctly. Mm-hmm. I can spell it, but it's Adi. Um, and you take it every day. It increases the number of sexual thoughts that you have every day. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, God. Which to me sounds crazy. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't... no, people are going to be out here <laughs> fucking humping fucking so light poles. I started asking the question, like, I mean, if it makes you think about sex more, does it make you think about all of your indulgences more? Right. Like, am I going to eat a lot more cake? Yeah, because it feels good. <laughs> yep. Yes. Am I going to drink more wine? Because I <laughs> yeah. like that. Too. I'm an alcoholic fucking nymphomaniac now that I'm on this medication. That sounds super fun, though. <laughs> yeah. No, for sure. Like, w- w- sign me up. There you go. <laughs> when, right. do, when do we start taking this? I mean, I, I am horrible as hell my husband has zero sex drive I'm like the one who's just fucking ready to tear it up you know so I don't I sympathize with people who don't have a sex drive like I think that sucks because I don't when I get to that point in my life I'm probably gonna be like what you know what do I do too so everybody deserves that yes desire I was uh, having a conversation with one of my best friends yesterday about what happens when your sex drive goes away we were talking about being on antidepressants and how it makes orgasm so much more difficult and I'd been on one before and I couldn't orgasm myself even without yeah and that's just like a thing like that takes me no time it's real quick i've heard that antidepressants <laughs> do that do, though yeah. to people like they take it takes away their joy almost like yes. it makes you numb to everything not just sex yeah you know? and like physically numb so i was working harder and longer and then getting bored and then i wasn't attracted to myself <sighs> no. anymore and i was like the antidepressant is making me depressed yeah <laughs> so i had to get rid out. of that no yeah. i actually know a couple people the same thing happened yeah. to where it's just like it just was bad news you know i don't think i've yeah. ever read a good review you about an antidepressant I've oh, I, I love them I, do you I love I love them they are very very helpful but not all of them and right you have to be able to accept the side effects and not each one has the same side effects either mm-hmm. so I'm I'm a huge fan of them how do you feel about L-methylfolate because that's what I took mm-hmm. that helped me with my anxiety since I've had my breasts removed I don't even yeah. have to take it anymore that is one of my favorite antidepressants Yay. it's in, See, in light I try to tell you about all this stuff I try to yep. preach it to all my friends I'm like eat these pills I love <laughs> I'm gonna be I, happy put, I try to put almost everybody I put my daughter on them once. Yes. Like, I yeah, love yeah, those yeah. things. Like three to five days, you feel so much better. So much better. And so it hits you a lot faster than a, than a classic antidepressant does. And and classic antidepressants an, take four to six weeks. Right. And this, it's not an SSRI, right? right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's one of the main reasons why I was like, okay, I'll take this. Because yeah. they explain that it's kind of like a vitamin. Right. Okay. And you can add it too. So if you're on an antidepressant and it's not getting you exactly where you want to be, but you don't want to increase your dose because you don't want to flatten out or you don't want to add another one because of side effects or whatever, you 
can add the L-methylfolate to your antidepressant and use it yes. with it. Well, I was taking L-methylfolate, liquid magnesium, and St. John's wort, and it was an amazing cocktail. I can't imagine taking liquid magnesium. I would be drooling Shit on myself. Your pants. Oh, really? Oh <laughs> yeah. my God, that's crazy because mm-hmm. I have such a, I have a, that gene mutation, so everything hits me. Like, like I tried to be a drug addict when I was younger, and drugs always make me <laughs> sick. Like, I really tried to fucking be a drug addict just to be, to re- be rebellious, and it's just the Aquarius thing to do. And I couldn't because drugs always made me sick. So things like are 10 times intensified in me. Magnesium does not affect me at all. Like I can take it. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. I wonder if maybe that's why when I do take it sometimes I actually can like fall asleep at like 6 o'clock at night. Yeah. I've never thought about that. You should take it in the afternoon because it'll help you rest better. Oh wow. It helps with um, muscle cramps and muscle spasms. and. I love it. Well I tell everybody my anxiety. I even made a freaking YouTube video about it because I was like (laughs) I found the fucking cure. (laughs) And I'm going to share it with everybody. (laughs) How do I keep my clit from getting hard every couple of hours? (gasps) Hard. (laughs) Well, they do say that a clit looks like a mini penis uh, underneath all that hoodage. So she's getting engorged every couple hours. I mean, we all know what to do with that. Yeah, just fucking flick the bean, bitch. (laughs) Antidepressant. Go hump a cabbage. (laughs) Go hump a cabbage patch doll. That's what I used to do when I was five. No, right? Are you complaining? Their heads are so hard, you know. I'm telling you. So pretty much just rub it out, bitch. That's all you got to do. You you got a problem we so. all want. I know. I actually had a patient come in and ask me for help with that, like to de- to decrease her sex drive because uh, her husband was focusing on religion and felt like sex was taking away from his call to God. And so they're married, though. Yeah, they that's, were married. That's, and it's so it's legal. I know. So uh, I put her on the antidepressant that kills your sex drive. Like there's one that's just horrible for it. So crazy <laughs> shit. So this girl wrote in. And she said, tell me all about discharge. What can I learn from my discharge other than if I have an infection? I feel like my discharge changes sometimes, but not in ways where I feel I have an infection. For example, some days the discharge is more watery and others it's sticky, or maybe it's more white some days and clear others. I go to my OBGYN every six months and nothing has ever popped up. What could my body be telling me? Most of the time the uh, discharge changes because your hormone changes. So when I, I talk to my patients, about how every week their discharge is probably different. So there's that, you know, really clear discharge uh, that happens when you're ovulating. Mm. Um, Once you ovulate, if you don't get pregnant, it tends to turn into like a thick, um, pasty, like almost school paste type consistency and can be irritating um, and looks sometimes like a yeast infection. So you go from clear to school glue looking thing to your period and then it comes back to normal and then the cycle kind of starts over again. So most of the time that is um, a reflection of um, your hormone, where you are in your cycle. Right. And um, as long as it hydration status. Yeah, and as long as it doesn't smell and there's no blood and like it's not green, you should be okay, right? Color by itself not like poop. Shouldn't be (laughs) alarming. (laughs) You know, like if poop's a certain color, you need to go get something checked. They change that too. Do they really? (laughs) Unless there's like I'm so old. I need to get up with the times. (laughs) So usually uh, if there's irritation or odor, then then there's something wrong. But if there's no irritation and no odor, then I wouldn't worry about it. But the concerning thing I find is that there are so many women out there that don't know what a normal vaginal odor is. Right. So they'll come in and, you know, I'm down there like, Shh, oh, is wrong. No. And they're like, no, I don't have a discharge. Yeah. Yes, you do. Yeah. Yes, you do. I feel do. like that's women who aren't in tune with their bodies. I like don't, the I don't one, know. Like the one chick that came into you that had freaking anal beads in her vagina. That, just since I've seen you last, like I've been traumatized. Oh, no, no, no. We're going to, I'm going to, I got to ask you, I'm going to keep you for horrible. a little bit longer because we got to hear some of these stories. <laughs> so every six months she goes to the doctor. Mm-hmm. So you think just listen to her body as long as there's no itching, inflammation. I think if she were to actually sort of chart out the changes in her discharge by the week, mm-hmm. she would start to see a pattern mm-hmm. that happens. And once you see a pattern, then you start thinking about other things that are happening during that week. Like during this week, I had no sex drive right. and my discharge was like this so you sort of build on your own knowledge just right you know so first of all it's just laying down the foundation of i want to know what's going on what she's already done yeah so she may just have to go the extra mile actually journal that stuff yeah you know? and just figure it out yeah and then once she starts to see a pattern in the what the discharge looks like or feels like she'll probably start to notice an, a secondary pattern like gotcha my mood is like this when this happens or 
or um, I don't sleep as well, or I'm on different medication, like she'll start to see some changes, but it does start to be a bit concerning if you don't understand it. Cause, right. And if you are not partnered with somebody and your discharge is changing, or if you are partnered with somebody and your discharge is right. changing, you're like, scary. what the hell? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, that's going to conclude the questions. I feel like you answered so many of them for us. Last time you were here, you were telling me some horror stories and everybody <laughs> always wants to hear about some gynecologist horror stories. Yeah. What are some of the new ones that you have came that you've had to endure since I last saw you? I actually had one uh, kill my appetite for all. Oh, it was horrible. Did they have a blue waffle? It <laughs> was the blue it, waffle. It was actually a wad of paper towels that oh. that had been shoved in there, and she had Ooh. no idea that they were there. I, I thought it was a joke at first. I was like, "Oh, would, would you leave me?" And Wait she, a second. Yeah. Okay. She was so like, this what? girl came in, and she was complaining about what she had like something going on no she came in just for a well woman it was no oh just came no in like everything's great mm-hmm. yeah no oh, what mm-hmm. okay and so you she get wanted, her up there. she wanted to make sure she wasn't pregnant so i get her up there and i put this speculum in and i'm like okay she left something in there here we go so I, oh i'm like God. oh so wouldn't you know what'd you put in here like so i'm trying to get the story like you put something in here for a reason so what is it and why yeah and then i can help you with that right yeah so i'm like well what'd you put in here and she's like well what are you talking about and i was like well you left something in here well, i don't know what you're talking about so I pull it out and when I pull it out the room ew just like got dark oh no sick and it was like the, the first time that I had that type of it was the worst thing it was I'd like ever, cutting an onion ever pulled out of a water. vagina hole like I've seen I've smelled some horrible things from you know besides and her vagina didn't smell at all like she wasn't complaining of a smell no no oh my nothing, god nothing so you pulled out one paper towel it was just a wad of them. So I pulled it out and I was like... Like she was fucking herself with a fucking... So I looked at it and I was like... And I'm looking at it too long because that's when it, <laughs> it no! hit me. No! Oh my God, dude. Like it looks like no. a wad of paper towels. And I looked up and my assistant just oh. did the whole hands up. I was like, no, bitch, take. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> take it. Take it. Sick. So she sits up and she said, well, I didn't put that in there. I'm like, well, somebody, somebody shoved all that in there. Like, he, and so I'm worried about her at this point. Like, what's happening to you? Yeah, like, did you get fucking you, date raped? Yes. Well, like, yeah. did somebody slip you something? And then she gets a little attitude, and she was like, well, I went to another gynecologist three months ago. You think that, um, she, you, I would think that they would have said something. Oh so, like, gosh. I planted it there. It made it stink crazy. that bad. So I was like, how long has that been? And she was like, I mean, three months ago. Like, oh, <laughs> it's been my in there for God, three dude. Months. Listen, I left a tampon in one night, uh, overnight. I, well, okay. <laughs> I used to get really tossed back in the day and my ex and I had sex and I guess I forgot to take the tampon out two days later my vagina did not smell amazing and my tummy was bloated and I could not figure out what it was like I, and I'm a freak about my vagina so I was instantly squirting shit up there trying to you know metro gel <laughs> fucking doing whatever I could didn't work so I go to the gynecologist and they didn't see anything they're like everything's fine you probably just have a little infection here's some antibiotics to call us in the morning I sit down to take a shit one day and literally like a, like three days later and I'm pushing out and when I push out I hear <laughs> and I'm like that didn't come out of my asshole I look in the toilet and it's a fucking tampon that was up inside me that the gynecologist didn't even fucking see like what the fuck and then my vagina went back to being beautiful and glorious but I believe that gynecologists some of them can't find stuff because it's happened to me but I don't know about a roll of fucking toilet paper. I mean, when you put the speculum in, if you if there's something in there and you put the speculum in under it and then open up the speculum, oh. you're just going to push it up? Well, I have a really tilted uterus too or whatever. Does that matter? Because literally when they put me on the table, they have to turn me upside down pretty much to get up in there. No? I need to come to you because yeah. these people are fucking killing me I every know. time. I have, all, I have all kinds of people that come in there and, and they're, they're bracing themselves and me like, they, my last gynecologist said my, my uterus is tilted. Yeah. And then I get in there and I'm like, done. Why? <laughs> You're like, like yeah. smooth, just in and out. Yeah. Why don't you tell everybody where they can find you? Currently in Smyrna, Tennessee, um, at the Stonecrest Medical Center um, campus. We are in Suite 250 in the medical office building um, south of Nashville. And your Instagram or social media so that they can go and... Instagram is... Uh, <laughs> DM you with the fucking <laughs> questions. Watch all the pictures start coming. Yeah, <laughs> just fucking... Oh. Uh, it's Service Station by Felix mm-hmm. on Instagram. Um, and it's the Service Station on Facebook. And our website. It's. I, I guess we're about to publish that now, right? Oh, okay. When is that happening? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just finding that. Okay, so as of tomorrow... <laughs> Sharice Felix, MD. 
Com. Is that right? Yeah, All look right. at you. You a look boss. Look at that. I can't wait to you see it. You a boss. Yeah, me this, too. I'm excited. I'm excited about this website because all the models on the website are actual patients of mine. Yay. And they've all come through the service station. We have we have held each other up, delivered babies, Aww. held hands, cried, and, fucking, yes, yep, all of it. laughed, hugged, yelled, all kinds of stuff. And these are real women, real real community people that are yeah. just that that just support by. you yeah they let me that let me learn on them they yeah. let me try stuff on no. them no dude everybody um, loves you awesome. i'm telling you they're all up in my inbox just talking about <laughs> what a great human being you are that so it's really nice to hear thank you for that thank you so much for coming to see me again last time i saw you we were sitting at my dining room table Oh, and I am in like, heaven right it's now. It's crazy, right? I feel like I need a different outfit for this room. No, <laughs> I fucking, I love you. I adore you. I cannot wait to have you come back. I just, I'm so excited to see what you have going on and just the growth of your practice and everything. Thank like, you. I'm so stoked for you. I'm like your number one supporter over here. So thank you. I appreciate I that. totally just adore you. Thank you so much for coming. And thank mm-hmm. you guys so much for listening to another episode of Dumb Blonde. I will see you guys next week. Bye.